I want to share from the word today. Thanks, thanks. If you can open your Bibles to Psalms, the book of Psalms. But before we jump into that, I, when you talk about the goodness of God, As a church community, as a church family, we saw the, the hand of God at work through lives of people, as in lives of people. And I want to show you a video of, of what God did last year. Okay, so just could you turn your attention to the screen and, and let's, let's watch this video together. And just like that, it's 2022. We wouldn't necessarily call 2021 easy, but it was a year that stretched us all. And maybe some of us have felt like giving up one too many times. And yet, you're still here. Through God's grace, we're still here. And that's all part of our journey. And the beautiful thing is, God isn't finished writing it yet. In fact, he wrote 2021 for our church, and this is what it looked like. In the course of our discipleship journey in 2021, we launched Leadership Conversations with our Victory Group leaders, a series of webinars that was geared towards equipping our leaders with relevant and crucial topics. The pandemic did not stop us from sustaining relationships as a church family, home visits, hangouts, calls were very much still part of the year. We were able to get countless requests for prayer and get connected, all of which was handled by our online engagement volunteers. Also, 345 believers publicly declared Jesus as their Lord and Savior were water baptized during our Victory Weekend. As for our ENC4 students, they had to continuously adapt to the digital setting. It was challenging to connect with friends, to not get cabin fever while lengthily staying home. But it was in these moments that our young people needed more conversations, to be heard, to know that we can empathize with them. So our Every Nation campus team had the extra initiative on top of calls, prayers, and numerous visits to launch live convos. A webinar where young people could dialogue and discuss relevant topics like gender, sexuality, mental health, self-care, and their God-given identity. For almost the whole of 2021, kids were not allowed outdoors. And thankfully, our ates and kuyas did an amazing job as 900 kids learned more about Jesus through our Kids Victory Group Hangout. 2021 is not complete with our church planting in Taguig City and it has now become a regular weekly worship service in the parking building of Vista Mall Taguig. For our worship services online, we continued to stream via Facebook and YouTube. Some of you even joined us on Zoom in our prayer rooms. None of these would have been possible without you our committed and faithful volunteers. So last November 30, 2021, we had Kita Kids, our volunteers appreciation event. In an initiative to help us navigate our daily walk with Jesus, 2021 was also the year we launched the Walk Daily website and podcast. Our social media pages have also been focused on helping you journey through the year with content that is both relevant and helpful to your personal relationship with Jesus and to the people around you. The chapter of 2021 is done. We've turned the page to a brand new year, a new chapter, 2022. And together, it's time to go deeper. All right. Thank you, Lord. Anyway, uh, I'd like to bring your attention to Psalm 27. We'll be there. And if you could swipe to your, to your uh, Bible apps there if you have them. Psalm 27. We'll really focus on just one verse today. And, you know, some believe when David wrote this psalm, 
Uh, he wrote it as a shepherd boy. But most of the Jews actually uh, say that it was written towards the end of his life. Uh, he, already, he already was king. He's old and gray. And he wrote this psalm. But if, it were, if that were the truth, if that was really the time when he wrote it, this would even become more meaningful. It doesn't matter when, but if it were really towards the end of his life, that would have been even more meaningful. In Psalm 27 verse 4, the Bible says, One thing I have asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I will dwell, may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. You see, if he was really old when he wrote this, you can note that his priorities, no matter how much he has achieved, how many lands he conquered, how many kings he defeated, how many you know, more plunder he got for his kingdom, more than that, his one thing was actually in place. And he defines it here, his one place. Ano ba yung one thing? What is that one thing for David? What is the one thing that he was talking about here? You know, I, was, uh, I met, met somebody yesterday. Um, and, you know, even as a, whether you're a new person in church or whether you're an old, old guy, not old as in old in age, you know, but uh, old in church already, like me, okay, as a pastor, we want to continue to share God's love to people and to continue to reach out to them with the gospel. And so yesterday I was talking to somebody and I was asking the question. He, he had a lot of, he's not a Christian yet, and, and I continue to try to reach out to, to, to people who don't know Jesus. And so I said, what is it that, your, what's your ultimate goal in life? What is your one thing? And so he's explaining to me, because he has, he has a huge business. I said, I mean, I want to be one of the, one of the most, one of the wealthiest men in Asia. Wow, so I go, wow, grabe. Wealthy. And you know what? I'm not even kidding. He can, he can, he can make it to that, to have that title. But I told him, I said, okay, if you get to that point when you already have that title, not just one of them, maybe you're the of Southeast Asia, maybe, what's next for you? What's next? And he didn't have an answer. Because I want to tell you today that you can have a goal in that one thing. But the thing is this, it's insatiable. It's unsatisfying. And kasi tinanong ko, underlying that goal, what is it? He was explaining, I want to prove the people that did not believe in me. I want to prove them wrong. Okay, once you get to that point that you've proven them wrong, what's next? What's next? And so, Psalm 27 verse 4, he says here, David says one thing. It's one thing. Not more kingdoms to conquer. Not more plunder. Not more gold. Not more, um, I don't know, kingdoms and lands. This is my one thing. And that would be my prayer for us today. Even as we start 2022 as a leadership team, all of us here, because you're an extension of our leadership team here at the, the full-time leadership team. You all are leaders. And so here's the thing. He says, one thing I've asked of the Lord that I will seek after. His one thing is the presence of God in his life. That's his one thing. And that should allow us to think, ano nga ba yung one thing ko? What is my one thing? What am I seeking after? Is it more money? To get married and have children? Right? Is it to have, launch a, a successful career? And again, listen, those are amazing things. We cannot not have them. But what is your one thing that you will seek after? He describes it actually in three ways. He says that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. That's the first thing he says. That I will dwell. What does this mean? To continually be in his presence. To actually have conversations with him. And many of you here, you've had conversations with Jesus this pandemic. You've spoken to him. Because a lot of those times, it was in tears that you've 
cried out to him. And he says, I want to dwell. And that was, the, that was actually the design God has for, for Adam and Eve, for all of us. That we would, remember in Genesis, the Bible said he would walk in the cool of the day. And that he would be with Adam and Eve. And that's, that's the desire God has. He created us so that he can fellowship with us. Not so that he can make us work. Not so that we can be enslaved by the chores. Not that we can... It has to be overflow. Because making disciples is a chore. Listen, I don't want that. But what I want is a relationship with Jesus. And from that, I want to help others discover Jesus as well. Are you guys following this? Are you guys understanding what I'm trying to say? So you see, he says he's here. He says here that the presence of God. See, if everything gets stripped off of you, who are you? Who are you going to be? If everything else is taken away from you, who will you be? Pwede ba na I'm just a child of God? Pwede ba yun? You know, I, if I can be very, if I can be very honest uh, with you, you know, there's been some, uh, sometimes anxiety that, that would hit me, right? It's like, Lord, when will this pandemic end? It's like, after all this, will we even have a church? I mean, if I can just be vulnerable, will, will we even have a church? But it's like, what will the church look like, right? And so last Monday, God had to rebuke me. And he said, you know what? I'm building my church. You're not building the church. It's not Paulus' church. It's not Victory's church. It's not Steve Merle's church. It's not Joey Bonifacio's church. It's not Patrick Mercado or Jeff Elescopides' church. It's Jesus' church. I will build my church, Matthew 16. And what is it to you, Paolo, if, if I want you to pastor just 100 people? Would that be okay with you? That you don't have the largest church in, in, in victory. Because you know what? Sometimes, and again, arrogance can come into all of us, right? Oh, you know, we're from victory for it. And we're like this. Or we've had a lot of disciples. And we're doing these things. And we're accomplishing a lot. And if Jesus says, I just want you to be with me. Just walk with me. What if that's the only calling we have? How many of you know? That's already well worth it. You're one thing. See, the goal is not to be successful. The goal is to be faithful. Because success has different definitions from the world. Ah, successful, kailangan ganito. You have to have this. You have this amount. You have to have this number. But my goal, Lord, is I just want to be faithful to what God's called me to do. And then he says here, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, right? Psalm 27, verse 4, to gaze the be- upon the beauty of the Lord. To gaze upon his beauty. In other words, to worship him in the beauty of his splendor. Psalm 96, verse 9, worship the Lord in all the beauty of his holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Psalm 50, verse 2, out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Did you know that your God is beautiful in all his splendor? He's good and he's magnificent as well. Remember uh, a story about a guy named Pastor Mike Pilavachi. Okay. I'm not sure what, uh, but he's from the States. He's not a, I don't know what nationality he's in or he, he comes from. Mike Pilavachi did something radical years ago. One Sunday, that's what he did. I don't know if, one Sunday, he took out all the instruments, took out all the sound system, and they just worshiped the Lord with the voices of the people. Pretty radical, right? The people gathered just for worship with their voices. His point was that the church has lost its, their way to worship. They've lost the meaning for worship. Kasi kailangan may ilaw, kailangan may smoke machine. And again, that excites me. I mean, it's fun to have all these lights 
And we need these lights kasi hindi tayo magkakakitaan pag walang ilaw, di ba? Pag pinatay mo lahat ng ilaw. I mean, these are all great. But sabi niya, unfortunately, Pastor Mike said, we've lost our way. And it was awkward, but they got the point. It was awkward for the church, but they got the point. And from that experience, a guy named Matt wrote a song. Matt Redman. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth. That will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself is not what you record. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. You guys know this song. Coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's really all about you, Jesus. You know, stripped of everything, stripped of title. That's what the pandemic has allowed us to actually experience. Everything's been stripped off of us. Very simple, life has become. And so even if there's nothing else, will worship still be meaningful for us? And that's what David was saying. Lord, I want to gaze in the beauty of your holiness. I want you. I don't want, I don't want lights and sounds. I don't want just the instrument. I don't want, I don't want even, don't get me wrong. I don't want church. In other words, church in the, in the sense of just the building. I want you, Jesus. It's the purity of walking with you, God. That's what David was saying here. And then he says in the last part, he says to inquire in his temple. Inquire of him. Inquire of him primarily through his word. And so this year, we've endeavored as a, as a team. We, we, we prayed through this. And here's just the two words I want to leave with you today. Deeper intimacy. That's all. Just enjoy being the son and the daughter of the Most High God. That's it. Just let, love, uh, let Jesus love you and love Jesus back. You know. That's all I'm asking from you today. From, from, from 20, if we leave 2022, if we end 2022 and we have a deeper friendship with Jesus, that will be huge already as it is. In a time of a pandemic where everything's uncertain, you need something that's stable and secure. Stable and secure, that's Jesus. And so you take all the trappings away. You take all the lights and the sounds away. You take all the... I'm a victory group leader and I have 10 people in my group. Sometimes we, we, we become arrogant. I have 12 people. I have 17 people in my group, right? As if that impresses God. That doesn't impress God. What impresses God is a faith that, that honors Him and obeys Him and loves Him and worships Him. That's what honors God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Alam mo yun, yung contentment in Him lang. We're just contented, not because of a title, not because of a function, but because not because we're volunteers, not because I'm a pastor, not because we're not not all that. It's just Thailand, Jesus. Augustine said it this way: says, Thou hast made us for thyself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it finds its rest in thee. You have made us for yourself, meaning it is for him that we were created. Our hearts are restless until it finds its rest in him. John Piper, in the contemporary statement, 
Apparently, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a similar version of what Augustine said. God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. That will be my prayer for all of us this year, that we will have a deeper friendship with Jesus. Yun lang. Yun lang. I was listening to a, a podcast by Nathan Foster. I uh, saw BJ earlier. BJ gave me that podcast. And uh, he was saying, and here's what he was saying. He said, our hearts, our hearts are, were never designed to absorb the global trauma we experienced the past two years. What, what did he mean? I mean, now kasi, di ba, when you look, at, you get your phone, everything's there. Eh? Right? You read your, your re, you read the news up, out in the, from your phone, you hear the bushfires in Australia, you heard Kobe Bryant uh, pass away, I mean, like, two years, ano yan, this, this month, di ba? And then you hear, uh, of course, people dying. And then you heard India when they had that Delta surge. People dying every single day, hundreds, not even, th- even thousands. And they were being burned on the streets. Remember that? Remember? You saw that. And then you hear people, you see Facebook full of candles because people were dying. Our hearts were never designed to absorb a global, global trauma that we actually experienced. And then we... We go back into normal and say, ah, you know, gani, you know, okay lang, kasi papabalik na naman tayo sa normal and we're, we're okay. We, we brush things aside not realizing we just went through two difficult years. And Jesus wants to hold your hand and say, just walk with me. You don't have to pry, try to prove anything to me. The church, yes, is an army. But we also need to be a hospital. Because there are people who are wounded in the war. And we need to take them out of the trenches and say, let's get them healthy. Let's get them healthy. We need to learn to rest in his presence, guys. In a very busy world, in a very noisy world, we need to find that rest. You see, a baby doesn't need to, doesn't need to do anything to be loved by his or her parents. Ano bang ginagawa ng baby? Ganun lang, di ba? Cute, cute, eh, di ba? Pero mahal na mahal siya ng magulang niya. The parents love that baby. A call for 2022 is deeper intimacy with Him. That's the call. Church, this is the call. If we finish 2022 knowing Jesus more, loving Jesus more, and letting Him love us back more, that's good. That's really good. It's not about how many we've gone, brought to Victory Weekend. It's not how many in our group. It's not how many people we evangelized. Those things will overflow. Because if you understand the love of God, that will overflow. You will not be able to contain yourself. Alam mo ba yung ginawa sa akin ni Lord? Grabe yung ginawa ni Lord for me. Grabe yung inanswer niya yung prayer. Why is Adrian, in spite of a loss, giving worship and praise unto God and telling people about what he has gone through because he understood the love of God. He understood that God came into his life and because of that love, that love now overflows. That's what Jack and Francis was talking about, the love of God. Fiona's here and Fiona in our prayer time with our church staff the other day was just telling us he was, she was saying this is wildly rephrased but she was saying something like she was asking our Mary Malino some of you know her she asked her what about spiritual attacks how many of you have felt spiritual attacks this year raise your hand right like this year like that last year last year and this year right and so 
Sabi niya, what about spiritual attacks? How do we deal with them? Sabi ni Mary Malino. Actually, I'm not worried about spiritual attacks. What I'm more worried about is if we actually know what it means to hide in the presence of God. What does the Bible say in Psalm 32 verse 7? You are my hiding place. Right? That's what the Bible says. You will protect me from trouble. There's spiritual attack. God will protect us. Eh? And surround me with songs of deliverance. You're my hiding place. Do we know what it means to hide in the presence of God? Do you know how to hide in His presence? Let it be that this year that we would go deeper, deeper into friendship with Him. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Let's, in fact, let's all stand now. Let's lift up our hands. Lord, this is our prayer. This is our prayer. Abraham was called the friend of God. But we don't have to be on Abrahamic level to be called the friend of God because John 14, 14 says, Jesus said, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. What an honor. And Lord, let us take us deeper into that friendship, Lord, this year. Thank you, Lord.